Good day, beloved of Christ. Welcome to prayer on Monday, the 5th of December. We begin with our introductory responses after a deep breath. Restore us, O Lord God of hosts. Show the light of your countenance and we shall be saved. Together, show the light of your countenance and we shall be saved. Will you not give us life again? that your people may rejoice in you together, that your people may rejoice in you. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation together, and grant us your salvation. Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest together. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. The kingdom of God is at hand. O come, let us worship. Chapter 5 of Isaiah. We will read verses 1 through 12. Verses 1 to 7 are called the Song of the Vineyard. And this tells a parable in which God is the farmer and Israel is the vineyard. The Jewish Study Bible notes, At first the identity of the characters is not evident, and only gradually does the audience realize that it is they themselves who are being rebuked. Verse 8 begins a series of divine complaints, complaints from God's point of view. Chapter 5, verse 1. Let me sing for my beloved a song of my lover about his vineyard. My beloved had a vineyard on a fruitful hill. He broke the ground, cleared it of stones, and planted it with choice vines. He built a watchtower inside it. He even hewed a winepress in it, for he hoped it would yield grapes. Instead, it yielded wild grapes. Now then, dwellers of Jerusalem and men of Judah, you be the judges between me and my vineyard. What more could have been done for my vineyard that I failed to do in it? Why, when I hoped it would yield grapes, did it yield wild grapes? Now I am going to tell you what I will do to my vineyard. I will remove its hedge that it may be ravaged, I will break down its wall that it may be trampled, and I will make it a desolation. It shall not be pruned or hoed. It shall be overgrown with briars and thistles, and I will command the clouds to drop no rain on it. For the vineyard of the Lord of hosts is the house of Israel, and the seedlings he lovingly tended are the men and women of Judah. And he hoped for justice, but behold, injustice." For equity, but behold, iniquity. Ah, those who add house to house and join field to field, till there's no room for none but you to dwell in the land. In my hearing, said the Lord of hosts, surely great houses shall lie forlorn, spacious and splendid ones without occupants. For ten acres of vineyard shall yield just one bath of wine. And a field sown with an omer of seed shall yield a mere ephah. Ah, those who chase liquor from early in the morning until late in the evening are inflamed by wine. Who, at their banquets, have lyre and lute, timbrel, flute, and wine, but who never give a thought to the plan of the Lord and take no note of what he is designing. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I myself really enjoy the agricultural metaphors. I love it that the Lord loves the vineyard, loves the people, the women and men of Israel. And yet, instead of being fruitful for the Lord, they are like sour wild grapes. Wild grapes are inedible. The consequence of their rejection of God is desolation upon the land, judgment, a lack of resources to provide adequate defense from neighboring armies. The people lie open and vulnerable, while the leaders cavort around tables of wine late into the night, giving no concern for God and therefore God's people. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. We now return to 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, beginning at verse 4. 13 and ending chapter 4 and go on to verse 11 of chapter 5. This concerns the coming of the Lord, such an appropriate text for the Advent season. 
Sisters and brothers, we do not want you to be ignorant about those who fall asleep or to grieve like the rest of men who have no hope. We believe that Jesus died and rose again, and so we believe that God will bring with Jesus those who have fallen asleep in him. According to the Lord's own word, we tell you that we who are alive who are left till the coming of the Lord, will certainly not precede those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a loud command, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trumpet call of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. After that, we who are still alive and are left will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet their Lord in the air. And so we will be with the Lord forever. Therefore, encourage each other with these words. Chapter 5. Now, brothers and sisters, about times and dates we do not need to write to you, for you know very well that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. While people are saying, Peace and safety, destruction will come on them suddenly, as labor pains on a pregnant woman, and they will not escape. But you, siblings, are not in darkness so that this day should surprise you like a thief. You are all children of the light, children of the day. We do not belong to the night or to the darkness. So then, let us not be like others who are asleep, but let us be alert and self-controlled. For those who sleep, sleep at night, and those who get drunk, get drunk at night. But since we belong to the day, Let us be self-controlled, putting on faith and love as a breastplate and the hope of salvation as a helmet. For God did not appoint us to suffer wrath, but to receive salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ. He died for us so that whether we are awake or asleep, we may live together with him. Therefore, encourage one another and build each other up just as, in fact, you are doing. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Paul's teaching here seeks to answer questions about the eschaton, about the end time, about the return of the Lord. The community is wondering, well, what's going to happen if those who have died before the Lord is returned, what happens to them? And Paul is saying, they, you have need no fears for them, for the dead in Christ will arise first. And those who are living when the Lord returns will be gathered up to meet the Lord in the air. This latter movement is called the rapture, as you know. Clearly, there is much mystery here, much that we do not know or understand about the Lord's return. But we are instructed to encourage one another with this news. And how can we encourage one another? I think that we can encourage one another knowing that the Lord has all things in hand. And when the Lord returns, provision will be made for those who have died while waiting for the Lord's return. There is provision for those who are yet awake when the Lord returns. God has all things in hand. God's plans are right and true and good and just much to be desired more than fine gold. So let us then, as we wait, live as children of light. For, as is written in verse 10, He died for us, so that whether we are awake or asleep, we may live together with Him. Amen. Now we turn to our intercessions. The prophet John the Baptist preached a repentance which would bear fruit in the lives of those who heard him. In penitence and faith, let us offer to God our prayer for all people, saying, In the name of Christ, hear our prayer. We pray for the church throughout the world, remembering especially the churches in Markham Unionville, for the churches of our listeners here gathered and for all those ordained to public and particular ministries for the building up of the body of Christ. We especially pray for Reverend Lorraine, Reverend Esther, for Reverend Stephen, Pastor Lynn. We pray for Nina, for Catherine, for Carlin. We pray for our leadership team, our wardens for whom we give thanks, that in our diverse vocations we may serve the Lord of glory, 
In the name of Christ, hear our prayer. We pray for this nation and for all the nations of the world, remembering especially those who are victims of political or social injustice. We pray for those whom we have elected to public office, especially thinking of Frank Scarpitti, Doug Ford, Justin Trudeau, and for political leaders everywhere, that they may administer the tasks of government with courage and equity. In the name of Christ, hear our prayer. We pray for the sick. We pray for Rose, Richard, Ricardo, for Carl, Audrey, Joanne, Joanna and her family, And I invite you to pause the recording to lift up any who are on your hearts this day. We pray for the elderly and those who live alone. We pray for those who are overworked and for those who cannot find work. Send upon them the power of the Holy Spirit that they may be abounding in hope. In the name of Christ, hear our prayer. We offer these prayers to you, our God, in penitence for what is past and in faith that your work in us will bear fruit as we seek to do your will. For you alone are the Holy One. May our lives give honor to you. Through Christ our Lord, who taught us to pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Beloved, let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Friends, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious towards you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and grant you peace this day and forevermore. Have a blessed day today, Monday, the start of a new week in God's grace. And remember, we have those tickets available for you if you'd like to come on the 10th of December. That's a Saturday for 2 o'clock start of our concert with the Toronto Welsh Male Voice Choir. Bless you. Take care.